relying on the six recognitions. Seeing oneself as a patient. Seeing the teacher as a skilled doctor. Seeing the Dharma as effective medicine. Seeing diligent practice as the way to get cured. This means practicing diligently and earnestly. It's just like dealing with an illness where one should carefully listen to the doctor's instructions and take medication as prescribed. Seeing the Dharma teacher as the Buddha and thus generating reverence. The fundamental mission of the Buddha's coming into the world is to turn the wheel of Dharma and awaken the wisdom of sentient beings. Born in the Dharma ending age, we don't have the fortunate to personally encounter the Buddha. However, we are fortunate to have the opportunity to hear the Dharma. Therefore, we should regard the Dharma teacher as the Buddha and generate reverence as if the Buddha himself is imparting the teachings. This is because he is imparting the Buddha's teachings correctly and is also practicing them. If you think in this way, then it's not wrong or excessive to see the Dharma teacher as the Buddha. The most important thing is to have the Dharma lineage. As long as one has a lineage, one is the embodiment of the Buddha, and it is as if the Buddha is imparting the teachings. The Buddha's teachings, which are passed down from generation to generation through actual practice and realization, are free from any faults or errors. So, what difference is there between the teachings imparted by a Dharma teacher and the teachings imparted by the Buddha? If the Buddha were teaching here today, he would also teach about the three types of suffering, impermanence, emptiness and non-self. Perhaps the Buddha's voice is more pleasant. Apart from this, there wouldn't be much difference. Of course, because of your reverence, you would say that the Buddha could bestow more blessings. In fact, the blessings are the same. As long as you have sufficient faith in the Dharma teacher, the blessings are the same. The key to receiving the Dharma is our faith. Therefore, it's indeed not easy to cultivate faith. I am also waiting for you to gradually cultivate faith. Praying for the longevity of the Dharma We should think in this way, in order to make the Buddha's teachings flourish in the world for a long time, how should I listen to the Dharma? The longevity of the Dharma in the world relies on teaching and listening. Teaching, listening, meditation and practice are all necessary. If practitioners lead by example and properly listen to the Dharma, they can inspire others to earnestly listen to the Dharma, thereby making the Buddha's teachings flourish in the world for a long time. On the contrary, if no one observes the rules of listening to the Dharma, the Dharma will gradually disappear. Secondly, the longevity of the Dharma in the world relies on the practice of the Buddha's ears, the Sangha. If listeners can follow the proper way of listening, meditation and practice, they can make the Dharma abide in people's minds and continue to flourish. It's like pouring pure water into a clean vessel without any leaks. This is what we mean by the term lineage. 
The dharma transmitted by the Buddha is like a cup of pure water poured into a cup that is not polluted and has no leaks. The cup is clean, free from impurities and leaks, and not placed upside down. If the water is poured from one cup to another all the way, like this, to our hands, would the water remain pure? Yes. In this way, the water can be transferred to another cup while remaining pure. If it is poured into a polluted or leaky cup, the water cannot remain pure and cannot be transferred to another cup. This metaphor is great as it captures the essence of lineage. If someone asks what lineage is, this is lineage. It is like pouring a cup of water into another cup, where the receiving cup must be clean and intact. This is called lineage. If someone uses a broken cup, or even a dirty cup, that's why we are in the Dharma ending age. Some people use dirty cups to receive Dharma teachings. Their teachers are fine who have a pure lineage and have actually practiced and realized the Dharma. However, the disciples' minds are impure. After receiving the teachings, they think they have obtained the authentic transmission and then continue to pass it down. And that's terrible. If you learn the Dharma from such people, you will be in trouble. What they teach has impurities and errors, so you will be in trouble. This is why this aspect is tricky. In the Dharma ending age, in order to encounter a qualified spiritual teacher, we should first possess the qualities of a disciple. Of course, we also need to observe the teacher. Later, We'll talk about how to do that. However, you also need a foundation. If you have no foundation, how can you observe? How can you determine whether a teacher is qualified or not? You need a solid foundation. That's why the foundation is important. You need to grasp some knowledge. Therefore, In the beginning, don't think poorly of your current teacher. In fact, they have already taught you many things. If you choose to follow a more accomplished teacher to further your practice, you shouldn't despise your previous teacher. Instead, you should be grateful. For example, when you were a terrible person before, Someone guided you onto the path. Although they had many karmic habits and afflictions, they helped you to take refuge in the three jewels and taught you many things. For example, an elementary school teacher may not be very accomplished, but they are still your teacher. It's okay to learn from a more accomplished teacher later on. Although your previous teacher may not be very accomplished, you should still be grateful to them and respect them. Without them, how would you have been able to learn from subsequent teachers? Initial teachers are very important, and we should be grateful for their immense kindness. Therefore, teachers at all stages are important. Don't dwell on their flaws. As long as a teacher has imparted knowledge to you, you should be grateful for their kindness. This is crucial. Don't dwell on their flaws. It's very bad and ungrateful to dwell on the flaws of any teacher who has shown kindness to you. We are the Buddha's disciples. In the Dharma ending age, No matter who they are, including those who introduced you to the Buddha's teachings, 
those who transmitted the refuge vows to you, or Dharma teachers who taught you at various stages. As long as what they teach is correct, you should follow it. If they teach something wrong, you can then seek guidance from another teacher and dedicate the merit to them. You can aspire to help your benefactors after you have made progress in your practice. We shouldn't harbour negative thoughts. We should treat those who have helped us with compassion and forgiveness. Although they may have faults and wrong views, we shouldn't cling to these things. If what they teach is correct, we should follow it. We can learn from multiple spiritual teachers, just like in worldly studies, one can have many teachers. There's nothing to be ashamed of, no need to feel guilty. There's nothing wrong with that. However, we must be grateful to every teacher and generate Buddhacitta. You shouldn't despise your previous teachers. If you despise a teacher and seek another one, and then despise them again after a while and seek another new teacher, then you will be in trouble. If you harbour negative thoughts towards any teacher, you won't receive any blessings when you seek guidance from other teachers. Therefore, if you are not grateful to your previous teacher, you'll definitely not benefit from following subsequent teachers. If you don't even have gratitude, how can you receive the great benefits of the Dharma? It's impossible. How can an ungrateful person make great progress in their spiritual practice? That's impossible. If you lack gratitude and virtue, you don't deserve to practice more advanced teachings. Even if your later guru has high spiritual attainments, you won't receive the teachings. It's because your foundation is weak and your virtue is lacking. As a result, no matter what profound teachings the teacher imparts, it's pointless for you. Therefore, the author concluded here that as Buddhists, we should have a strong sense of responsibility towards the Buddha's sacred teachings. We should generate this aspiration. Through my listening to the Dharma, may the Dharma flourish all over the world. After listening to the Dharma, I should bear it in my mind and ensure that it won't be lost. We should not only learn and remember it for ourselves, but also pass on to others. This is similar to how virtuous people in the world would think when inheriting their ancestors' legacy. The ancestors' legacy has been passed on to me, and I shouldn't make it decline. As Buddhists, we should protect and uphold the Buddha's legacy in the same way, and make every effort to ensure that the Buddha's teachings can flourish in the world for a long time. If one doesn't even have the intention to protect and uphold Buddhism, how can they be called a Buddhist? Therefore, we should strive to be disciples of the three jewels. Don't just be disciples of the two jewels. Those who don't follow spiritual teachers are disciples of the two jewels. As I often say, disciples of the two jewels are those who only seek the Buddha and the Dharma, but neglect the Sangha and spiritual teachers. They are arrogant, saying, the Buddha is my teacher. As long as the Buddha's teachings are authentic, it's enough for me. I don't need spiritual teachers. Such people whether they are monastics or lay people, are disciples of the two jewels. 
Some people say that disciples of the two jewels are lay people who don't support the three jewels. However, this is not true. If you have become a monastic and received the full ordination vows, but you don't follow spiritual teachers, then you are just a disciple of the two jewels. You may think you are a disciple of the three jewels, but in fact you are not. If you have become a monastic and received the full ordination vows, but you don't diligently study and practice the Dharma, only chanting mantras and the Buddha's name, then aren't you a disciple of the two jewels? Where are the three jewels? In your heart there are only two jewels, instead of three jewels. This teaching is quite simple, but if we truly reflect on ourselves, we will find that we are unable to fulfill many aspects. If we can fulfill it, we will succeed in spiritual practice. We must practice through self-reflection. Moreover, whether imparting or listening to Dharma teachings, if one sets aside their own mind and thinks that the teachings are unrelated to them, then no teaching will be effective to them. Therefore, when listening to the Dharma, we must examine and analyse ourselves. The so-called self-reflection means using the Dharma as a mirror to examine and analyse ourselves. So, when listening to the Dharma, you should never think. Today, the teacher is talking about someone, criticising someone, pointing out someone's faults. It's not true. When listening to the Dharma, you should reflect every teaching on yourself and not reflect it on anyone else. To benefit from listening to the Dharma, self-reflection is the most important quality. As participants in this course, you are no exception. When the mentor is giving the lecture, you should definitely reflect every message on yourself instead of reflecting on other students. This is important. In the past, some students often messaged me after class saying, Teacher, you are scolding someone today. They took pleasure in others' misfortune. Of course, they were also joking with me. There are such people. It's just like a person who wants to know if there are any stains on his face. When he sees a stain on his face in the mirror, he will immediately remove it. Similarly, when listening to the Dharma, if one's faults are reflected in the Dharma mirror, one will become upset and think, how did I become like this? Afterwards, one will eliminate these faults and cultivate virtues. This is the key. Therefore, we must practice according to the Dharma. The Garland of Birth Stories stated, When I see the form of my misconduct clear in the mirror of the teachings, I develop a feeling of regret and turn my mind toward the teachings. The Garland of Birth Stories is a collection of stories of when the Buddha practiced the Buddha's Atva path in his past lives. The Dharma mirror means that the Buddha's teachings are like a mirror that reflects our sins. These are the words that Saldasa said when he requested Prince Moon to expound the Dharma. At that time, Bodhisattva Prince Moon saw Saldasa's intention and knew that he had become a vessel of the Dharma. Therefore, Prince Moon expounded the Dharma to him. A person with sharp faculties is a good vessel for the Dharma, so I can directly teach them without much effort. 
However, most people today are not good vessels, so I have no choice. Some are leaky vessels, and I need to repair them. Some are inverted vessels, and I need to turn them over. Some are polluted vessels, filled with wrong views and preconceptions, and I need to clean them. My current task is to transform you into a vessel for the Dharma. If you are a good vessel for the Dharma, then I'm very glad. Actually, it's hard to clean impurities in polluted vessels. For leaky vessels, I have to first mend their leaks before I can teach them the Dharma. It's not easy. This is because people who study here have various faculties, and I have to help them all. There are too many people. When I give teachings, I strive to concurrently help many people mend their leaks or cleanse their impurities. This is not easy. Let's summarize. When listening to the Dharma, we must solely reflect on ourselves. You shouldn't set aside your mind and listen to the Dharma as if it has nothing to do with you, as if you are a bystander. If you listen to the Dharma like a bystander or with a sceptical or arrogant attitude, you won't be able to absorb the Dharma and you won't observe your own mind. Even though you have arrogance, you won't notice it. In that case, you will be even less receptive to the teachings I impart. Otherwise, you won't address the key through listening to the Dharma. This is similar to using a mirror to check if your face is clean. Therefore, the Dharma is like a mirror. If we use the mirror of the Dharma to reflect on ourselves, we can improve quickly. Summary In summary, every time we listen to the Dharma, we should aspire like this. To benefit all sentient beings, I aspire to attain Buddhahood. To attain Buddhahood, I should cultivate the causes for Buddhahood. To cultivate the causes for Buddhahood, I should first understand the causes. To understand the causes, I should listen to the Dharma. Therefore, I should listen to the Dharma, recollect the great benefits of listening to the Dharma, and generate a courageous mind. I should strive to eliminate the three faults of the Dharma vessel and properly listen to the Dharma. The principles of listening to the Dharma can be summarized in three points. The first is to generate Buddha Chitta. Since we are practicing the body path, we need to generate Buddha Chitta. The aspiration to attain Buddhahood. This requirement is quite high. For Buddha's Atvas and those who are learning the Buddha's teachings, only when you have truly generated Buddhacitta can you be considered to have truly embarked on the spiritual journey. Prior to that, you can only be considered as an outsider in Buddhism though not a complete outsider. Before generating Buddha Chitta, you are not the Buddha's heir. You have just entered the door of Buddhism. A genuine heir of the Buddha is one who has generated Buddha Chitta. They are the princes of the Dharma, the children of the Buddha. The above principles of listening to the Dharma can be summarized in three points. Number one, generating a Buddha Chitta. Number two, recollecting the benefits of listening to the Dharma. And number three, 
listening to the Dharma with the right intention and conduct.